What is up, YouTube? This is Tiflin One coming at you with another video, and today I'm going to talk to you about Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, a prequel to the Harry Potter franchise, and arguably one of the most eagerly anticipated films of the year. Uh, I'm a pretty big Harry Potter fan. I grew up loving those movies, I've read all the books, and I was interested in this film because it changed some things up that I found rather interesting. Uh, it's going to focus on adults and not children. That was different. Uh, and it takes place in 1926 New York. Which, coming with that, we get to explore the American side of the wizarding world. And that is fascinating to me. But there was this nagging suspicion I had in the back of my mind that even if this film is good, there's no way it can recapture that Harry Potter magic. But much to my surprise, I was totally right. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is a movie I sadly found to be a massive disappointment. With a few admittedly strong elements. The biggest positive in this movie for me were some of the characters. I have to stress the some of part, because unlike the Harry Potter films, which were just packed with likable and interesting people, here the whole cast is very hit and miss. Uh, starting with, the main character, New Commander, is not as immediately relatable as Harry was, but his benign, pleasant nature I personally found rather endearing. Uh, Dan Fogler, as the muggle character Mr. Kowalski, was also really likable. I was worried his comic relief would come off his force, but it really didn't. The same cannot be said, however, for the character of Queenie, who, quite honestly, this kind of acted ditzy, and I never really gravitated to that. The strongest performances in this movie, by far, though, came from the villains. And that is one area in which this film lives up to the Harry Potter legacy. Colin Farrell is awesome in this movie. Although he is very similar to Voldemort, we do see different sides of him. Uh, particularly in his scenes with the other villain of this film, and the other best actor, Ezra Miller's Credence, who is unlike any other Harry Potter villain I've seen. Honestly, I'm just going to leave it at that, because frankly, these two are the only real reason I can think of to see the movie, besides the titular beasts. Even though some of the beasts are kind of flat in their designs, a lot of them are really memorable and interesting. But let's talk about the cons, and there are a lot of flaws in this film. The biggest, though, as I said at the beginning of this video, um, we get to explore the American side of the Wizarding World in 1920s New York. And you know what? I hate this place. There's no magic here at all. It's just, it's so dark and crime-ridden, and there's, you know, half the time the whole movie looks like they're filming on leftover sets from Newsies. This, this, the visuals are boring, for one. Uh, this city looks gray. There's no color here. There's uh, no creatures that are interesting outside of the beasts that are brought from England. Uh, it's just, I, I cannot imagine spending five fucking movies in this location. Okay, and that's another thing. Since this is chapter one of five, I, I know virtually nothing about these characters. I know as much about them as I did when I went in. And that's a big problem. There's very little development. There's a lot of scenes, way too many, in fact, where I just ended going, wait, what? So many scenes like that. Um, also, if you were expecting this to break the trend of being darker than the previous Harry Potter movies, yeah, no. This is I want to know, who watched the last eight movies? And then said, you know what this is missing? Child abuse, religious fanaticism, animal cruelty. These elements weren't in Harry Potter because they didn't belong there. And here they seem so awkwardly jammed in. And some of the characters, as I said in the beginning, some of them work, but some of them really don't. Particularly, for some reason, the female characters to me are just so flat and lifeless. On top of that, a real big problem with this film is the plot is so meandering. There barely is one, in fact. There's way too much, wow, look at that. And I'm sorry, after eight Harry Potter movies, that is not enough. You need a story there, and they just don't have... There's not enough of an emotional connection. I never felt interested in these people the same way I did with Harry and his friends. So all in all, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them has good in it, but all in all, I really can't recommend it. J.K. Rowling, you dropped the ball here, I'm sorry. Maybe stick to writing novels and not screenplays. I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Stick with one. Signing in.